All right, rock stars, we should be live. You should be able to watch your coach Barino live here on the Real Estate Rockstars. Let me double check. We are sending the stream up. Let's see if we're going. I'm just making sure. Yes, good. We are live. Fantastic. <laughs> I love when technology works. How are you guys? Welcome to this lovely Thursday noon or wherever you are. It's your coach Barino coming at you live, broadcasting from the Barino Worldwide Market Headquarters just outside of Washington, D.C. It's good to have you. I'm excited that we're going to spend some time together. Not exactly coffee, but this loveliness. It's called Salted Caramel Latte. I don't know if you know these guys, but this is really yummy. I love those things. So we're going to chat. I have some questions that I wanted to answer that you guys have posted on the Rockstars. It's good to have you here. And if you have any questions, you can just type them in in the comments below the stream and I will be able to see them and watch you and check you out and see what's going on. And uh, we'll get started, okay? Uh, let's see here. Good. Hey, Melanie checking in. Good to have you, Melanie. How are you? Nice of you to join me. I'm excited you're here. Okay. Why don't we just get started? The first question I wanted to answer is Tim. Tim Neal uh, is writing, I'm posting an email received from an expired listing. I'm still technically new and I don't have any sales under my belt. What should be my next move? Here's what the expired sent to Tim. We are currently interviewing agents who will make a decision based on their marketing strategies, listing timeframes, commission charged for selling and buying, individual selling track record. Please feel free to look at previous listings, pictures and tax records to assist you with your submission. Also encouraging prospective agents to drive through the Churchill Downs, Belmont area to see what a nice area neighborhood we have. We plan on making our decision on we want to represent us next week. So now, what happens if you have a seller like this expired listing who puts out these kind of conditions? What does it really mean? What does this behavior indicate? Well, first of all, what I like to teach you guys is the more you understand the human behavior, the seller psychology, the more powerful you are, the better equipped you are to help them. So number one, this kind of response, A, it's not very normal. Most sellers will not put this out. But those that do, the first thing you read there is fear, right? They got burned by the previous agent. Obviously, the agent didn't get the job done. They're unhappy. And now they want to make damn sure they're not going to make the same mistake twice. So they're very selective. They created this artificial filter through which they're going to filter all the agents, including Tim. Normal behavior after somebody got screwed by a bad agent, yes. Helpful, not really, because the conditions that they talk about there may, but most likely may not guarantee that they're going to end up with a good agent, especially if they start basing on commissions. Years in the business, man, I know many agents who've been at it for 20 years. They see a struggle. They're still not good agents. They're not rock stars, obviously. They're not one of us. But you know what I'm saying. Years in the business just means they've been at it for a long time. They're persistent, not necessarily good. You will occasionally encounter agent, uh, sellers who will have these kind of lists and who will have these kind of cockamamie, really, <laughs> for lack of a better, more appropriate words, uh, they have these conditions on which they think are making an educated decision. Here's the real problem. The real problem is this. Sellers do not make educated, logical decisions. Never, ever, ever. Nobody does. We don't. We think we do as human beings, but we don't. The problem with our behavior and with our decision process is it's based on purely on emotion. The seller needs to like you, trust you, and respect you in order for you to do business with you. Now, they have created this construct thinking, this is how we're going to like, trust, and respect somebody based on these conditions. In reality, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't happen that way. So, what the seller is now doing is imagine the seller got into a Uber car and they're inside the Uber and the driver is just horrible, right? They're going too fast. The driver's going too fast. He's just banging side to side, not getting them to their destination, going way too fast, breaking all the laws. So they're freaking out. So their first natural reaction is just to grab the steering wheel so they don't get killed. And now they're holding on to the steering wheel, trying to control the car to protect themselves. So what happens next time they get in an Uber car, they're trying to grab the wheel again because they have been conditioned and trained that if they don't stay in control, they're going to get fucked. That's what they're worried about. You cannot, as a professional real estate agent, help somebody who's trying to drive your car. 
You are the driver. You need to be in control. You're in charge. You have the expertise, the experience, the status, the tools and the resources to help them. It would be like, would you walk into a dentist office, sit in a chair and says, all right, doctor, I want you to use this tool, then I want you to apply this tool, then I want you to use this medication. That'd be crazy, right? You don't do it to a tax advisor, you don't do it to an attorney, none of the high status professionals that you pay a lot of money to. But the sellers, because unfortunately in our industry we have so many incompetent agents, that's what they do. They grab the steering wheel because many times there are so many incompetent bad agents. So that's the situation, that's what's going on. They're trying to hold on to the wheel. But here's the problem, not two people cannot drive that car. Either you're in control or the seller is in control. Now, if the seller sets conditions like that, they're clearly grasping and, and gripping the steering wheel really tight. And you can't help them when they do, because if you know that they'll be controlled and so difficult now, imagine what will happen when you try to put a lockbox on or you try to do certain things as far as marketing or suggest some repairs or bring an offer that needs to be negotiated. There's a good chance that they will remain in control and maybe this is their personality. Maybe they're really just painting the ass. We know a few people like that, right? Or maybe they will warm up. Maybe they will realize, oh, we're in good hands. Let Tim handle this. Tim is a good agent. He will take care of us. You cannot proceed until you clearly establish three things. Control, connection, and status. Your competence. In other words, you cannot help them until they let you help them. You cannot establish your credibility and your expertise until they listen, until they're in tune. So, long answer to a simple question, really, how do you proceed? What do you do with sellers like that? Number one, never deviate from your process. Do your process. How do you process the expired listings? What are the steps? You, a rock star, you already know that. You contact them first, you call them. If they have not been relisted, you do a quick drive-by. Stop by, have a little chat with them, bring the expired package, ask them questions. Here's the thing about communication. We're going to talk about communication in just a moment. I have a few tickets left to the confident communication. This really hinges on your ability to communicate with authority with them. So you ask them questions. He who controls the conversations controls the outcome. You need to change the, the mode. You reframe, you burst and break their frame, seller in control to competent agent in control. Now, I'm not talking about being aggressive, arrogant, rude, pushy, none of that. You know me, that's not my style. I love that, I'll leave that for the other coaches. What you want is genuine connection, but connection with authority. So if I were to be in, in, in Tim's position, if I were to interact with these kind of sellers, I would just establish from the very beginning, here's what we're gonna do, first, second, third. First, let me stop by, take a quick look at the house. Let's just see if we like each other first. Let's just see if we click. Let's see if I want you to be one of my clients and you possibly entertain the idea of me being your agent. We don't know yet. Let's take it one step at a time. So here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to stop by, take a quick look. Can you give me a five, maybe ten minute tour? I have some questions for you. I'm sure you have some questions as well. I appreciate your elaborate list of requirements. That is great. I like working with well-educated sellers who are prepared to make an educated decision. Compliment them a little. Well, I'll take a tour. We'll talk. And then based on that, we'll decide. Maybe we want to move forward. Maybe not. We'll see. And that's it. I'll leave it at that. The moment they start throwing all that shit at me, we need this, we don't want that, we want it this way, that way, I say, I appreciate that very much, but here's what we need to do. In order for me to entertain the possibility of helping you, in order for us to get together for 10 minutes, first let's see whether there is that possibility. You cannot do business with somebody you don't like, you don't trust and you don't respect, correct? I cannot take on clients who I don't like or clients I know I can't help. So you, you, you confidently stay true to your plan and you stay with it, don't get discouraged they first throw these things at you. Because what they many times just test is your integrity and how genuine your conditions are. They're probing you because of their past experience with salespeople in general or, or a bad agent. So the more you stick with it, in a pleasant way, notice that I'm not getting all worked up, I'm just smiling, I'm having a good time. Here is why. I am not attached to the outcome of the interaction, the conversation, the meeting, the entire thing. Because in my mind, I know there are plenty of listings out there. There'll be 15,000 transactions closed today. In one day, 15,000 deals closed. There's plenty of business around me. I already know that. So whether this one works out or not, I will do my best. I will give it the best shot. But in the end, it is what it is. Okay? So that would be my suggestion. Follow the process 100% because the moment you start compromising, the moment you buy into the seller's plan, the moment you become part of their plan and their approach and their strategy, you're fucked. It's over. 
And once they, you establish low status where the seller is in control, once they have that steering wheel, they're driving where they want to go. And you're screwed. There's almost nothing you can do at that point to recover. The only thing you really can do is just walk away, which is what I would do if the seller would insist on playing it by their rules. We already know if they knew how to do all this, they wouldn't need me. They wouldn't need a competent real estate agent. So this is just their way of testing, of probing to make sure that the next agent who will help them will actually be somebody who's confident, who is competent, who is helpful and honest, which is the type of agent that you, my friend, rock stars are. Okay, so that's how I would approach this. This is what I would do in this kind of situation to switch the frame, get the seller to be on my side, do it through confident communication, through being helpful, through being easygoing, but also very clear what the steps are, how the job needs to get done. All right, Tim, hope this answered your question. Hey guys, for those who is just joining us, welcome, Borino coming at you live from the Borino Worldwide Marketing Headquarters. We're having a good time here broadcasting on the Real Estate Rockstars, answering some of your questions. If you have more questions, do post them in the comment below the video and I will get to them. So that was Tim's question. I love what Sean Rainbow Ball, <laughs> Sean, this is great. He says, I talked to an agent today who said the market is really bad right now because there are no, hardly any expired. There's no such thing as good market. There's no such thing as bad market. I started real estate in 1989 where imagine interest rates started climbing to 13, 14, 15%. It was almost impossible to get standard financing for a buyer, especially if they had a B quality credit or not excellent income and not perfect A list buyer. A lot of foreclosures. It was a shitty market, really. Nothing was selling. It took three, four, five, six months to get a decent property sold. 30, 40% of our inventory. Some of you remember, if Angel and Patty, you guys are on, if you're watching this, do you guys remember that in 89, Whittier, California? It was brutal. I mean, it, it was a bad market, but it happened with two things accomplished. I learned how to work in a really hard, difficult market, how to get listings and get them sold, number one. And number two, how to appreciate a good market. But in a good market, what does that mean? Not enough expireds. You're fighting for listings, multiple offers. So there is no such thing as good or bad. It's just different. The conditions change. And if you study my materials and if you, if you diligently work the systems that you have, you already know that it's market independent that you can get listings in a hot market and a cold market, spring, summer, winter, fall, it doesn't matter. This has a way more to do with your attitude and your mind game than it has to do with the market condition. Yeah, it can be challenging at times, but that also means less competition. That also means a lot of people are leaving the market so you don't have as many agents competing for the listings and for the business. So trust me, there is no such thing as good or bad. Every day there is somebody in your town, in your area, in your city who wants to move, who wants to sell, who wants to buy, who needs your help. Your job is to find them, to connect with them, and to help them. All right? So I like that very much, Sean. Okay. Um, there was another question about FISBOs. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I know there was one more that I promised to answer. Okay, here it is from Dwayne. Dwayne from Campbell, California is asking, everyone I had a meeting with a FISBO today and to look at his home. It is nice, but not an open floor plan like everyone else's. So anyways, we walked around and I was asking questions. Well done, by the way, asking questions. You stay in control of the conversation. It's really good. And he wanted to bring me a buyer. I kept asking questions. He wanted to bring a buyer. I kept asking questions about the home and to find out what he has done to advertise. He just says Zillow and he said if we can't get a bite in two weeks, he will list with his agent. When I asked who the agent is and who he works with, he said he can't remember his name or the brokerage. I'm taking a buyer there on Thursday to see the house. Any advice on how to get him to list with me? First of all, Dwayne, well done. Kudos for taking action, going, talking to the FISBOs. That's really the most powerful, easiest, fastest way to build trust and connection with somebody, whether it's a FISBO, an expired, any type of a seller lead. If at all possible, have a face-to-face -face conversation with them. Chat with them in person. So well done. Second well done, you ask questions. That shows that you're interested, and I know you are genuinely, number one. Number two, that develops more connection because you have a flowing conversation. Number three, you're in control of that conversation because human mind is programmed to do only one thing at a time. And if I ask you a question, your mind automatically focuses on that question. You may choose not to answer it, but you cannot not focus on it. So asking especially relevant, probing, deep questions where you're genuinely interested in, in the answers and carrying it as a conversation, as a dialogue, and as a script, gets you very far, very quickly with every seller. 
Not to mention, you know their situation, their plans, their motivation, their core driving emotion, all those things. So with that being said, what do you do with the FISBOSES we already have an agent that we're going to go with? My take on it, bullshit. Absolute bullshit. It's nothing but a smoke scene, especially if they don't even know their name, but even if they did. Think about it this way. Look at their actions, not their words. They're using the words to protect themselves again. A lot of the seller behavior is fears-based behavior because they're dealing with many times very incompetent agents, many times reciting some silly sales scripts from 1990 or God knows when they, they picked up on the internet or some uh, free workshop. And the sellers are protecting. It's that knee-jerk reaction we all have. You walk into a store, you know you're going to buy, you're ready to buy, you know what you want. Salesperson approaches you, can I help you? What do you say? Yeah, exactly. Just looking. Exactly. It's the knee-jerk reaction. So I have an agent, or we already have an agent. Look at their actions. If the other agent was really competent, a good agent, would he or she let a good friend, somebody they know, go for sell by own? Of course not. Would you let your mom, your brother, try to sell on their own without your help? Absolutely not. I wouldn't. So there's only one of two things. Either the, there is no other agent, they're just bullshitting you. It's just a smoke screen, which is normal. People act that way. Or the other agent is not very competent, not a great agent. So what they're really saying is, we have an agent and we may list with him unless we find somebody really good and really competent, like you, Duane. So it means absolutely nothing. Discard it. Acknowledge it. Don't pretend you didn't hear it. Say, oh, good for you. It's always good to have somebody in the business you already trust a little. Now, I, you use a diminisher, a little, suddenly I diminish their trust. It's a neuro-linguistic programming trick that I would incorporate in the language. But other than that, I keep going. Here is the general rule I'm offering you working with FISBOS guys. Until they list, either with you or somebody else, or they sell and close where the deal is done, it's an open game. The game is on. Until they list with you or somebody else, or they sell and close, disregard what they tell you because majority of that will be brushes they will be just smoke screens and walls stonewalling you to eliminate all the weak agents or to aggressive agents or incompetent agents so just keep going keep talking to them be cool be helpful in this case and any FISBO case your persistence really is what matters the most be persistent with them be helpful be cool offer advice answer questions work with them, be in touch with them. Just the fact that you continuously are in touch puts you light years ahead of your competition. So stay with them. If you have a buyer, fantastic, show it. If you don't, no big deal, just be helpful, be cool, but continue the dialogue, regardless of what they tell you, because they're going to be throwing all kinds of stuff at you. And as you'll see, as you do this a lot, you're going to recognize that it's nothing but a smokescreen and it's just a made-up bullshit. It doesn't make them bad people, doesn't make them liars. It simply means selling is important to them, but there's not enough trust. So what you focus on in conversations, what you want to establish is a lot of trust. Where they see you as a guide, as an advisor, not a salesperson. So to give you a practical advice, what I would do is if the buyer was interested, I would just bring him by. I would continue the conversation if the buyer wants to buy it, offer to, to put it all together, work out some kind of a deal, whatever you feel would be fair. If the buyer is not interested, tell them, hey, there are plenty of others. Let's stay together. Let's, let's keep doing this. Because during the conversation, there is one important question you need to know, answer to. And that is, how long has it been for sale? And when do they feel it's time for plan B? Like in this case, two weeks. That's fantastic to know. That means he's coming to an end, the seller, realizing it's not going to happen. I can't sell this on my own, which most sellers don't. Most of his boss cannot succeed on their own. And the numbers have been steadily dropping over the last 10 years. It went from 14% to 8. Out of 100 transactions, 14 used to be FISBO. Now it's down to 8. Half of those 8 are sales to somebody they already know. That means it's not even a real FISBO. They just sell it to their relative or a close friend. You have a great opportunity to help a lot of people and score a lot of listings if you work FISBOS. And if you're using the FISBORINO system, it's already outlined there step by step. If not, I recommend you get it. Go to FISBORINO.com and jump on it. But regardless, stay in touch with these folks. Be cool. Be helpful. Every 7 to 10 days, they need to hear from you. You need to have a communication with them. Have a conversation with them. Cool? 
That would be my advice to Mr. Duane and just stay with it. Now, what if they do happen to sell on their own? What if you happen, what if you help them sell on their own? Or what if they do list with somebody else? Plenty more. There's plenty more. Occasionally that will happen. Be okay with it. See, not being attached creates a lot less resistance because I don't need to push. I'm not desperate. I'm not too eager to get that listing. I'm passionate. I, I'm, I want to help. But beyond that, you don't control directly the outcome anyway, so don't be attached to it. Do the best you can with what you have. Repeat that 10 times every day. Do the best you can with what you've got. That's the best advice I can give you. Cool? Was it helpful, Dwayne? Yes? All right, guys. Are you enjoying it? Good broadcast today. Everybody having a good time? Awesome. Terry says, agent tells me too much competition. I said, I don't worry about competition. I am the competition. Absolutely fantastic, Terry. Totally agree with that. 100%. Mm. All right, Melanie says, what should I bring to a for sale by owner? Excellent question, Melanie. What do you bring? I recommend bring something simple at the beginning. Never overload them with too much. Don't make it too complicated. You don't want to scare them off. Always just one thing at a time. What would the FISBO find helpful? For example, one of the things you can bring is, here's a list of seven websites where you should promote your house. It's practical, it's fairly easy to implement for most of us, and it's helpful. No sales materials, nothing about you, no pamphlets about your company, nobody cares. That's not the time. So you can bring a list of websites to advertise, how to set up Google Voice so they protect their privacy, they don't advertise and blast their phone number all over the world. You can help them put together a flyer. You can help them set up an open house. You can help them set up an ad on Zillow. You can help them set up an ad on Craigslist. The list goes on and on and on. Anything that is practical. You don't want to just kind of a bullshit thing, blow smoke up their ass with something that you know is not going to help them a whole lot. Help them set up good pictures. Hook them up with a good real estate photographer. Show them why the pictures are so important. Those are the kind of things that FISBOs respond to. And don't worry about if they sell on their own. Some will. It's okay. But I, I absolutely am convinced all of you rock star students who follow my system, if you follow these steps, you already know. Some will never sell, some will sell on their own, some will list with another agent. Sucks, it hurts, but it will happen. Even the biggest rock stars will not get 100% of, of them, but some will list with you. Simply because you're cool, you're helpful, you don't pressure, you don't convince them. Yeah? So that's, that's what I can give you, Melanie. Good? All right. Jack wants to know, do you have a script or an idea for old buyer leads? I have from six months to a year ago. Jack, here is my advice. Do not read my lips. Let me zoom it in so you really get it. Hold on. Let me zoom in. Here you go. Read my lips. Do not work with buyers. And old buyer leads, even worse. Do not work with buyers. You want to make a lot of money. You want to control your business. You want to be a top star, rock star agent. You want to do really well. Focus on listings, 100% listings. Your marketing, your advertising, your follow-up, your promotions, your focus, 100% listings. Stay away from buyers. No marketing initiative should be focused on buyers other than getting your listings sold. That's it. Here is why. There are several reasons why. These are the tickets, by the way. You guys are asking me. I see your comments there. If you're just joining us, welcome. Barino, your coach here on Rockstars, having a little coffee with you. This is the handful of tickets we still have left. There will be a workshop here in Washington, D.C. I don't know many live events. There are only two we have on the calendar for the remaining of 2016. One is, and I'm really excited, and if you guys are watching, if uh, Nick and Tristan are on, congratulations, guys. You put together a kick-ass group, and I'm really looking forward to the event we're going to do in October in Miami. They're putting together a three-day workshop in Miami. I'll be part of it. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be pretty awesome. We're expecting about 400 agents who will get together for three days, do some pretty cutting-edge, amazing stuff. Now, this is the Confident Communication Workshop that I'm putting together two days here in Washington, D.C. with me personally. I limit it to 50 people, only 50 agents, and there's a reason for it. It is not to create scarcity and for you to jump on board, though I'd love to have you on board, but we're going to work in a classroom where half of it will be me present, doing the presentation, doing the teaching and coaching you. But half of the workshop, that means every few minutes I will stop and you will test and try different things. Everything that has to do with communication. That means we're going to start with your prospecting. How do you come across on the phone? 
confident, competent? Do you know what to say? Do you know how to ask questions? How to segue? How to bridge to appointments? To follow up to all that? Or do you come across as too aggressive or needy low status? We're going to test all that. We're going to try all that. So I'll give you some points and then you're going to role play. Then you're going to test. Then we're going to do actual phone calls. We're going to get on the phone, call expired, score for sale by owners, where you're going to, in real life, try something that may be a little bit of a hurdle for you. Then we're going to move into a follow-up. If you have a lead, how do you follow up with them? What do you talk about? How not to come across as too needy, too pestering, so you don't pest, pester them, you, you're not a pest. But still lock in a lead, develop enough trust and rapport with them so when they are ready, they pick up the phone and say, Jack, come on down, we want to sell our house. Or when you do call them and say, yes, we're ready to sell, let's talk. So we're going to practice that. Follow-up, then we're going to try objections. What kind of objections do you usually get? How do you get stuck? We'll work on that. So it's all about communication. The second day, we're going to take the third part. So we got prospecting, then you have follow-up and objections. Third part will be your listing presentation. We're going to practice live listing presentations. Right there in the room, you're going to be the seller, you're going to be the agent. Then we're going to switch. And I'm going to watch. I'm going to walk around. You're going to ask questions. It's going to be very interactive. Half the time, you're going to be actually doing the work. That's the plan. We're going to have cameras there, video cameras, so you can see yourself. And if that scares you, you got to be there. You know what I mean? If you have apprehension about it, if you feel nervous or if you feel uncomfortable, you got to be there. We have a few tickets left. If you want to come on board, just go to topconfidence.com slash live. Or I can just post it. You know what? I'll just post it in a comment um, below the video. So it's topconfidence.com live. We have a few tickets left. It'll be right here in Washington, D.C., Great Hotel, Hyatt Regency. You're going to be five, four or five miles from the White House. It's a great time to visit D.C. October is a lovely month. The weather is pretty pleasant. The leaves are starting to turn. So if you want to turn it into a trip, we're going to be working on Monday and Tuesday. So might as well make it a trip. Come on down on Friday and spend a couple of days exploring D.C. It's beautiful. You just take a metro, a few stops, and you're at the White House. You're at the Capitol. All that is fun to explore. Not to mention this will be a very intense, cool workshop. I can't wait to work with you in person. I'm really looking forward to it. So that's the Confident Communication. It's topconfidence.com slash live. If you want one of these, we're going to actually mail you a ticket. We'll mail you the information on it. It's October 3rd and 4th, Monday and Tuesday, right here in DC. All right, my friends. Cool. Okay, Jax is cool. What is the cost? Right now, we have an early bird special, Jack. It is $149 for the two days of coaching. Now, if you'd like to incorporate the two programs that come with it, we worked out a pretty nice deal, a pretty nice discount. You're gonna get the Core Influence Advanced Communication Program, which is both videos, actual book, and a stack of dialogue cards that's gonna come in the mail. And you're also gonna get the listing presentation. If you don't have it, might be a good idea to get it. For that, the ticket plus this program, I think it's $4.99. Let me just double check. I wanna make sure I'm gonna give you the right numbers. Yeah, it's $4.99. That's an early bird discount. You have two more days to jump on that. Then it's going to go up to uh, the tickets to the workshop. Going to go up. All right. So that's Jack's question. Awesome, my friends. Having a good time. Let me have a sip of this goodness. If you have any questions, just post it in a comment. Okay. My man Stelios. How are you doing, brother? Uh, has a question, what do you bring to a listing appointment? A lot of the work, but also a lot of the impact and a lot of the way that will determine whether you're gonna get the listing at the end happens at the beginning. First, your first impression. That's one of the most important ones, is how you're perceived at the beginning. High status, advisor, cool, pleasant, likable, and authority or weak, just like everybody else, agent. First impression, critical. Then through the follow-up, I'm reinforcing that frame. Then once the listing is confirmed, they're gonna get my pre-listing package. And it comes with the presentation plus, by the way, if you're interested. But what they get is a eight-page resume that you can customize, you personalize it. You don't need to change the content, just put your photo, your, your logo on it, and contact information. But the, the purpose of the resume and the pre-listing package is to re-establish or establish my authority and expertise that I'm the cool guy who's ready to help, and it prepares the seller. It presets what's gonna happen next. One of the things that I include there is a market overview, 
so that they don't get price shocked when I actually present it. So a lot of that stuff comes in advance. They're going to get all this, they get a copy of my marketing plan, so I don't have to spend too much time explaining how we're going to market the house. It's also a differentiating factor. Most agents don't have a good listing package. They just don't use one. So this will differentiate. So they, they, they get all that in advance. Then during the actual presentation, all I'm going to bring is my laptop and the paperwork. If you use paper, if not, DocuSign, you're good to go. Everything I deliver is part of the Presentation Plus. It's a set of slides, videos, and audio. It's a multimedia presentation. It lasts about 23 minutes that I go through. Now, it is not me pointing the screen and just sitting there, obviously. I am the center of the focus. I am connected with them. I have a conversation with them. The presentation only accomplishes several things. It reinforces my status as an expert. It communicates the price values. It delivers my skills so they see that I'm competent. And it helps me stay on track. But the slides will not replace your ability to connect with the seller, of course. But that's all I'm going to bring. That's it. And at the end, I close it down, or sometimes it, even during the presentation. You know how sometimes you have a presentation with the seller, and 10, 15 minutes in, you know you got them? Just close it down, say, you know what, guys, we can go on and on and on, but I think you and I just have one more question. What do we do next? And they will go, oh, yeah, yeah, let's just get it going. Boom. You sign them up, you're out of there. Okay? One recommendation I would have is keep the paperwork to the bare minimum. If you can get away with just agency and the listing contract and maybe getting the net sheet signed, that's it. You don't want to overwhelm them with too much paperwork, number one. You want to keep it short and you have your assistant, your staff, or your listing coordinator, somebody else, bring them to the office and spend the time and really explain what is a transfer disclosure statement and a lead statement and whatever else documents they need to sign. They don't need to, if they don't need to be signed right there and there, I wouldn't waste their time and my time. I don't want to overload them. I don't want to exhaust them. Because the natural reaction to when the brain gets exhausted, and it is exhausting, 25 minutes of absorbing all that, plus me talking to them, can wear them out. So I want to make it quick. I want them to make the right decision, list with me, and then get out. Phase two would be they come to the office, fill out the rest, sign the rest. Plus, it also shows my place of business. They get to meet my broker, possibly, my assistant, my staff, and everybody else who will be involved in that. Okay? So that's what I would recommend. All right. Hope I answered your question. Warner has a question, hi Warren, is it the same as the bootcamp? It is not Warner. The two-day workshop, the Confident Communication Workshop, is a live workshop right here in BC. It's not the same thing. This is where we're going to work on your communication. How you prospect, communicate, handle objections, anything that has to do with interaction with your clients, whether in person, like if you meet a for sale by owner, or you meet a lead, a seller lead, or a buyer lead at the open house, anything where you interact with somebody on the phone or in person. That's what this class is about, including your listing presentation. The double year listings bootcamp is something different. It's a class I teach two, three times a year where I take a group of 30 agents. It's online, it's all online, so it doesn't matter where you are. And once a week, we work on your systems. We literally, you and I become partners in your business and for seven weeks, we build your business systems. We build your prospecting systems, we build your follow-up system, and we build your listing presentation system. So it's something very different. What I will do is post you a link to the boot camp that is goborino.com so you can check it out there okay so that's the boot camp stereo says awesome yes you did extremely valuable coaching borino awesome that is really great excellent all right my friends so anything i can answer Let's see, we have more questions from you. Boy, lots of you are with us, awesome. Huh. We're gonna do more of these. I think it's kind of fun to, to be able to communicate. It would be nicer if you were able to call in and we work on a technology where you can just pick up the phone and I can patch you in and we can have an actual conversation. That's gonna be awesome. We will have it up and running probably within a week or so. All right, let's see. Brian has a question. If I bring some of my team members, we each purchase our own ticket, correct? Uh, Brian, uh, let's talk offline. We'll, we'll get you a deal. No, you don't need to pull for, pay for a full price ticket if you want to bring more people. Especially with you, Rockstar. Man, I, I love following your videos and your broadcasts and your sexy car. So <laughs> we'll work something out. So let's talk offline. Um, I'll shoot your little PM over, over Facebook and we'll work out the, like a nice discount group. group deal. Any of you guys, if you want to bring some people from your office here to DC for a couple days, We'll definitely work something out together. Cool? 
Thanks for being here, Brian, by the way. I appreciate it. Definitely one of the best looking real estate rock stars in our group. <laughs> Make us all look better. All right. Let's see if we have anything else. Oh, Warner wants to know, what about the one in Miami? The information about the Miami has not been released yet. Um, I don't know if I'm even supposed to talk about it yet. I don't want to get in trouble with Nick and, <laughs> and Tristan. But uh, the one in Miami will be at the end of October. I don't have much information yet. We're still hashing out the details. We're putting together a lineup. There'll be some awesome speakers. It'll be a lot of people who know what they're talking about. And this is not your high school real estate. You know what I'm saying? Some of these coaches have been teaching you high school level real estate. So we're going to take it up a notch. This will be the college style or even university style real estate. But other than that, there has not been much released. The tickets will go for sale on sale in about a week or so. More information will come. Uh, I am involved, the lab coach agents, and if you're not part of it, it's a great group, lots of good information, lots of agents there. After Rockstars, I would highly recommend you join them. It's called Lab Code Real Estate Agents, right by Nick and Tristan and a bunch of other very competent people. Great information, I hang out there as well. All right, Warner, so that, that hopefully answers your question. If you have more questions about my coaching, I don't want to turn this into a big sales pitch. I do want to tell you what I'm doing so that if something resonates or you feel like it would benefit you, then we can definitely talk more. You can always email me or post on Rockstars. My email is borino at expiredplus.com. Fire off an email, let me know. Post on, on Rockstars. I'm on there two, three times a day, minimum posting, chatting with you guys. So if you have more questions, let me know. Okay, guys, I think we can wrap this up. Elias, my man, he's coming to the bootcamp. Awesome, I saw your sign up, I'm excited. If once you take the bootcamp with me, that's the seven week program, the online program where we build your systems, you can come back. You can retake it. It's only 97 bucks to retake, really good program. All right, my friends, let me do one more refresh to make sure I didn't miss any questions or comments. Outstanding. All right, guys, time well spent. Did you enjoy the broadcast? Should we do more of those? Let me know. Tell me what you want, what questions I can ask, some of the questions that you guys posted here on Rockstars, I will tackle. I will give you my point of view. And thank you for all of you contributing and participating, either asking questions, posting stuff, something for inspiration or tips, posting answers, it's awesome. That's our community, we are here. Notice that our admins are very vigilant. We don't post any bullshit. We don't allow any spam or any promotions or marketing. This is strictly to keep inspired, stay informed, hang out together with like-minded people like you and I. Okay, so thanks for being part of all our, our community. If you have anything, email borino at expireplus.com. Just a little side note, Roseanne is on vacation this week and next week. We miss you, Roseanne. Hope you're having a good time. She's in Europe, enjoying herself. So my staff, we are one man down. <laughs> so if it does take us a little bit longer to get back to you or ship your package or help you with access, please bear with us because the master champ, uh, uh, head honcho Roseanne, is not present here, so we're scrambling trying to make it work, but we'll get through this. All right, friends, have a terrific rest of the Thursday. If you're watching this on replay, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for being here. Coach Borino signing off. I'll talk to you real soon. Take care, have an awesome Thursday. Let's go get him. Bye, everybody. <laughs>